welcome back subscribers and viewers of fvg news uh this time i'm responding to a question that has come from about two uh zep applicants who want to apply for a waiver and they want to know the documents that should come from them or the documents that should come from both them and their employer which they need to prepare before they can submit their documents at the vfs office uh although this is readily available to those who have applied already they would know because after you apply there is a, a part where you have to download a checklist of the documents that you need uh, i will go on still and explain to you so that when you prepare your application you already know or have a, a bit of some knowledge on what exactly you need to provide in the form of documents that should come from you or your employer particularly there are three forms of documents that people have been trying to understand where they should come from so there is a checklist uh, on i mean which then carries about six documents that you need if you are applying for a waiver or if you are applying for a, an exam exemption where if you are applying for an exemption there is seven documents but the questions that we have uh, been getting are based on those who want to apply for a waiver and the main question is what is the duly completed online form which uh, states that handwritten forms will not be accepted by the department of home affairs so this is the form which you get online when you are applying for your waiver or your permit you fill in a form on the online portal that's the form that is required which you should provide when you are submitting but you cannot download this form before you have paid you can only download the form after you have paid and then you have booked an appointment after booking an appointment you will get where you have to download uh, a checklist again which carries four documents that that is where you will get this form so if you haven't paid but have applied this is the form that you have filled in but you cannot download it until you have paid then there is a letter which is signed by the employer citing the requirements to be waived and a comprehensive motivation for each requirement so this is where your employer if you are employed by a company the company fills in motivating for you they vouch for you uh, in terms of your experience in terms of your knowledge of the particular work but stating that you do not have the necessary qualifications that are needed for you to qualify for a particular payment that you are applying for then they will be asking specifically for certain sections or certain requirements that you need to be waived for example you have a critical skill that you you, you possess for which you did not study but because of your experience and your abilities your employer may motivate that even though you don't have that particular skill they believe that you are as good as somebody who has that skill because you already are performing that particular job you already have the experience in that particular job or uh, giving an example that maybe you need to have a certain level of uh, education in a particular critical skill but you don't have that kind of education but you have some level of uh, qualification still in the field which may not be at the level that is required by the critical skills uh, in terms of the immigration act they can also motiv motivate pleading with the department to consider you for a waiver or to consider dropping some of these uh, requirements or uh, taking it as if you do have this particular level of exp uh, of qualification based on your level of experiment or of experiment this is a plea by your employer it doesn't follow that once they've written this you have going you are going to get the waiver but it is a plea for them i mean by them to the department of home affairs to consider granting you that can, uh, that waiver of the required uh, qualification so i hope it is clear there then you need a copy of your curriculum vitae which is called a cv you know uh, all about this because i believe that when you got the job that you have now you applied using your cv so this is the kind of document that you also need to produce a copy of the 
applicants passport and all temporary residence visas are fixed therein this one is uh, straightforward then you need, you need a copy of the employment contract signed by both the employer and the employee supposing that maybe you are working as a motor mechanic and you were given a contract at the point of employment which you signed and your employer also signed which states the terms of engagement between you and your employer it may state even the salary it may state the benefits that you have or the benefits that you are supposed to get you need to produce this one as well then a background on the company or institution for record purposes uh, again this is where your company then gives its own background uh, what company is it where is it based what do they deal with uh, are they paying tax their registration number things like that not uh, exactly as i put it but it's a brief background of the company so that uh, the record is kept that Nkodi Singube is employed by uh, so and so motors as a motor mechanic and this company is based at such and such a place so these are the kind of documents that you need to produce but as soon as you finish filling in the online application form you will get to a checklist where you will download this for yourself thank you very much please subscribe to this channel like this video and share it. don't forget again to ask any whatever questions that you might have using the comments section underneath this video